At this point in our program, we have a community moment, and a community moment is an opportunity for anyone in the community to come up and talk about something they've read, something that's interested them, something that's happened to them, something that they'd like to share, anything really. Uh, just, we just ask that it be less than 10 minutes. Uh, today, our community moment speaker is Gary Huell, who has come to the rescue when our original community, mo community moment speaker was sick this morning. So thank you very much, and here's Gary Huell. Actually, Chuck said he was feeling better, and I offered to let him, let him have my notes so he could do the community moment anyway, and it's, the title is called Limits of Compassion. He says, I don't have any compassion, so it'll probably be a very short presentation, so anyway. Uh, so I'll do it instead. Um, I, I don't know why. It says there a community of compassion and reason. I, I feel that reason and compassion rolls off the tongue a little better, so that's what I call it. Uh, but that's how we describe this community right here. And it's one of the things I really, you know, feel is special and, and one of the reasons why I like being part of this community. And I've done, you know, some of the projects that we uh, are engaged in, things like uh, uh, Project Cure or help at the Houston Food Bank or Books Between Kids. And, and you know, I, I feel pretty good about that. I've, I've helped individuals that have been victims of, like, flooding or other, you know, problems like that. It all seemed really, you know, hey, that's, that's kind of nice. But I've run into situations outside of these four walls that have caused me to ponder things a little bit. And so I thought I'd share some of that and, and hopefully at some point engage with some of you to, to carry on the conversation even more. I live in a townhouse in Midtown, about five miles up the road here. And... In February of last year, when Houston uh, 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 sponsored the uh, Super Bowl 51, they had uh, an incident that, that affected me in my townhouse, and that was that they wanted to, well, the official word was they wanted to move some of the homeless people so they would be farther away from uh, traffic and things like that. They were concerned for their safety. As a consequence, directly across and down a little bit from my townhouse, uh, I suddenly had the largest, I feel the sound is changing here, I had the largest contingent of homeless people in the city of Houston. And it's had a lot of consequences. Uh, the first thing I found out was that the value of my townhouse dropped about $100,000. I also found out most every time I go out to the store or any time I walk around the, uh, uh, the area, I am subjected to panhandling. Uh, and it's also become, you know, I get on, I really don't like red lights because if I have to stop at a red light, they kind of swarm in and, and, uh, and ask for contributions and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, I want to be, I want to be um, compassionate. I'm part of Houston Oasis. I'm a compassionate person. But this is kind of ticking me off. I don't quite know how to, to, to handle this. And that's what caused me to start pondering things. And I came up with two or three reasons why. I'm like, okay, so th this is why, you know, I, I can't just submit to all of the panhandling and all of the requests and stuff like that. So I came up with these ideas as to, you know, how to deal with it internally, you know, inside my, myself. And I want to share those with you uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, and I'll admit, I, 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 this is a part of a blog that I had written for, for Oasis, uh, uh, I don't know, a month ago or so like that. And I came up with these, you know, reasons about why it was okay to not always respond to a panhandling request. But the more I thought about doing this presentation today, I felt more and more like, well, maybe you're just finding excuses. And so, it, although I have the reason part in my head here as to why I, you know, can ha handle this internally, the compassion part still struggles a little bit. Um, uh, the first, one of the first things I, I thought about was if I gave money 
to every individual that asked for it, soon enough I would be like one of those individuals. I would be, you know, homeless kind of a thing. And so I thought, well, that's a good reason to say, okay, no, I, I really can't. I don't have, you know, the money right now that I want to, you know, be able to be compassionate with. And so that was my first, you know, I'll say excuse for saying no, I, I don't want to uh, respond to that. Um, the second one is I've become something of an expert in the stories that they tell when they approach me for panhandling. And about 99% of the time, my introduction, my relationship with this homeless person begins with a lie. You know, they, they have some reason why they, they need me to make a contribution. It's not always just money. I was uh, in a grocery store once shopping. Rachel was actually with me. And I was pushing the shopping cart, and this guy comes up, and he puts two five-pound bags of chicken wings in my cart. And he says, you know, could you help me out here? I, I, I need some food for my grandchildren. And I'm like, okay, well, first of all, I, I, I decided I want to find out what this was. And I went over and looked, and each of those bags of chicken wings was $15. So he wanted a $30 contribution here. Uh, and so I, I, I turned him down. I was, you know, the more I thought about it later, it was like, okay, if, you're gonna, if you've got hungry grandchildren, is really, is, it, is chicken wings the best way to go to, to, you know, to take care of that kind of a thing? Uh, you know, when we all think of, you know, somebody says, oh, we're, we're talking about homeless people here. I, I think of a, a woman and her children rushing out into the night, you know, trying to get away from violence. And it never occurred to me that the first place she would want to go was wing stop or something like that, you know. So anyway, so that's another reason. I'm like, okay, when, when it starts on deception, well, okay, maybe that's another reason not to get too involved in, 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 uh, in the compassion part of, of, of myself. So, and the, and the third reason I thought about was that a lot of these homeless people around my, uh, my townhouse out there are there sort of by choice. And I say that because there are services available through the city of Houston where they can go and they can have shelter and they can get food and there's other, you know, uh, 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 services available to them. But drug use is, is pretty pervasive in that homeless community. And if they go to a facility where they have to obey rules, Things like drug abuse would not be allowed. They would have to probably get treatment and things like that. So they choose not to accept help from the city of Houston. And so they're kind of there of their own accord. And I know it's not entirely, you know, black and white in that regard. But if somebody puts themselves in a situation where they need compassion, if it's a sort of a voluntary thing, I'm not so inclined to say, okay, yeah, I want to be, I want to be compassionate. So anyway, so those are the three things that I, I came up with as to, you know, sort of a justification why I can say no. And I want to close with, with two points here. One is, and, and this was hard because I would get angry because I was always being you know, approached and, and asked for money or something like that. And I'm like, okay, that's, you, you, I had to get over that, which, which I still have to struggle with, but I, but I do. But at the end of the day, these are human beings. And getting angry with them, uh, is not the right way to treat somebody. I mean, if, if I'm not going to be compassionate by, by giving food or money or whatever it is, I still, I ask their name and I say, well, no, I, I, I'd rather not make a donation here. I mean, I have my reasons, but, you know, treat them like human beings. Don't treat them like, like Donald Trump would treat them, you know, kind of, <laughs> kind of like, these are animals, we don't, you know, just, you know. But, uh, so, so that's an important part of it for me is to, to, to treat them like that. But again, to, like I, I mentioned early on, you know, I, I feel like, okay, so I, I have used this reason thing to reason out why I can say no. But somehow in here, still doesn't feel very good. And so I would be uh, interested in talking with any of you to say, what do you think? You know, what, how do you deal with, with something like that? And when, when you, you are a compassionate person, but there are limits to compassion. Thank you.